Hey everyone, Strung Out BGD here to do another review, and this time we'll be checking out my Haru casting Maji. Please note that this girl is from the first batch of Majis that were shipped out. While I do not believe Haru will make any dramatic changes to this doll in the future, he has so far fixed an issue with her knee for future versions of her. I'll get into that later in the review. As with all my doll reviews, there will be plenty of doll nudity in this video. While Haru Casting's Maji body is not graphically sculpted, if nudity is something that bothers you, I would suggest that you stop watching now. We'll first check out her official measurements, and of course I have some specifics about my doll listed as well. This girl is about the same height as a mini fee, but don't let that fool you into thinking she can share clothes with a mini fee or other slim minis. The thighs do not lie, but I'll get into that later. Like many other dolls in the market with a head cap system, Maji's cap is kept on with magnets. Her eyes are also kept in with putty and an S-hook keeps her head attached to her body. I would also like to quickly note that as far as this version of Maji goes, she does not have any eye wells, so you might have some difficulties positioning eyes in her. I would suggest using low domed eyes to make life a little bit easier for you. As for mobility, she can't look down too well, but looks up and tilts her head quite nicely, and her head generally keeps its position without any fuss. And here's a look at her head sculpt. She is terribly cute. Her eyes and lips are the main thing that won me over. As you can see, she can easily hold up her arm on her own. Her arm is double jointed with a floating peanut elbow piece. Her arms are by far the best I've ever handled on a BJD. Her elbow might be in the traditional rectangular shape, but it doesn't look at all jarring when fully utilized, and she can pull off some amazingly realistic poses thanks to the overall design of her arms. Moving on to her hands, she has a nice amount of movability within her wrist joint. If you didn't watch my unboxing of her, Maji comes with two pairs of hands, one pair of open hands and a second pair of closed hands. I tend to use her closed hands most often since they're so dang cute, but her open hands look pretty great too. I'd definitely love to see more hand parts made available to purchase from Harrowcast in the future. Down to her torso, you can see she bends very well at her bust joint. Unfortunately, with the way the joints were designed, they don't look very smooth or refined when fully utilized. And then you have the hip joint, which is one of the most finicky and frustrating parts of the body in my opinion. The bottom of the torso and the elastic channel openings in the hip piece were made with just huge openings that give the string way too much room to move around. There's some locks sculpted in the pieces, but they really don't do much. I'm planning on trying a different stringing method to see if I can get her to handle better in this area. I'll likely make a video for that in the future if it turns out well. Down to the hips and thighs, if you've ever owned an Ipple House doll, this stringing system likely looks familiar to you. I'm guessing the string that goes through the groin area of the hip socket is there to keep the thigh pieces together with the hip piece. But I haven't gotten around to experimenting with the stringing styles to see if this is really necessary. I will say though that her legs are very solidly put together. And as you can see, she has a swiveling thigh, which you can pull apart and lock the bottom part of the thigh into an upwards position. So she can sit with her knees up to her chest. She can also hold her legs up on her own very well and is a solid sitter. Now on to the knees. I don't like her knee joints nearly as much as her elbows. She's unable to sit on her knees very well and you can even see me struggling to get her to balance on them. Also for my Maji, she ended up having an issue with one of her knees in that it sort of gets stuck when you try to straighten it and it ends up taking some extra force to get it to click back into place. As you can see, her other knee behaves far more smoothly. Haru has posted videos on his Instagram to show that he has fixed this problem for future Majis. Those of us with the first batch of this doll will have to email him about getting a replacement if we so wish. Then last we got her feet. The ankle doesn't have a very impressive range of motion and the feet are just stiff in general. On the plus side, if you own a lot of dolls with slim mini side of feet, you won't have problems finding shoes for her. And here's the body in full. Despite some of the annoying jointing quirks this girl has, I still love her like, whoa. Overall, Haru Kasten Maji is an amazing little doll with an adorable face and awesome body silhouette. On top of being an aesthetically pleasing doll, she's also fantastic at posing, even with her little quirks. 
That said, she can be a bit of a pill to handle, especially when first taken out of her box since she is strung so tightly and can end up being fairly kicky overall. If you're accustomed to restringing dolls, I'd definitely suggest doing just that with this girl. Also, if you're either new to the hobby or simply don't have a wide range of differently proportioned dolls of this girl's size to garner information from, you might have some minor difficulties finding bottoms for her. It might not seem like it from pictures alone, but this girl has some thick thighs and pretty wide hips. She might easily fit into tops made for slim minis, but I've found that standard MSD bottoms fit her best. Just expect to do a decent amount of experimenting on your own with bottoms that fit her. And that's it for the review. As always, you are free to ask me anything you so wish about this doll in the comments section below. See you guys in the next video. Hey everyone, Strung Up BGD here. To do, to do, to do, to do, to do, do.